It's called like Mecca of AI, San Francisco. Meta is leading 22% of the revenue increase that happened in Q2 of 2024 is driven by AI. Very important question about the job market. Sure, people are struggling with jobs. So I've interviewed students in New York, in Georgia. Okay, welcome back aliens. And today we have Singh in USA, Hadnoor. So welcome back to Dalisco or welcome to Dalisco for the first time. And uh, so yes, two days back, I got to know that Hadnoor is coming to Bangalore. and I thought it's a good opportunity. So thank you for coming out of the city uh, to meet uh, me and Dalisco office. So since you are from USA, I have a few questions. But before that, if you can introduce yourself to the audience. Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Hanur. I'm currently a software engineer working in iOS development and a little bit AI and uh, working for almost four years in the tech industry and big fan of Telusco. When I wanted to learn Kotlin, the first channel that came into my recommendation was Telusco and I'm a big fan and especially for Spring Boot, the only channel I see on YouTube with that much detailed content is Telusco. Oh, thank you so, so much. <laughs> okay, now I have to change my questions. <laughs> I thought I will target you, but no, not, not, not this time. Uh, in fact, I started following you from uh, way back when you moved to USA. And uh, I saw your, one of your blog moving to USA and then working there, how difficult it is to find apartments there. Uh, recently, I saw your video about moving the apartment. In fact, we saw that video together. Uh, Harsh and me. So it was fun. Uh, and you have created a new genre of blogging in USA. So that's a good start. Okay, so since you are from USA, my initial question will be based on USA. So we'll start with that. Uh, now, when, we came, when, when you came here, we were talking about events and uh, events happening in USA, events happening in here. Uh, in fact, I tried to do multiple events. In fact, in, in Hyderabad, I tried. In Mumbai, I tried. In Bangalore, I tried. And well, the same thing happens, which happens to you. So lot, no, lot, normally a lot of people will register, let's say 100, 200, people will show up, half of them will show up. And still we are not sure. In fact, what I did once is instead of giving it for free, I asked them to pay 500 rupees for the event. And while going back, I will give you 500 back. So that's how the, you can ask people to come here. Uh, one of the reasons which I feel is why people don't show up to the events is because of the traffic and uh, uh, as you mentioned, the mood. Uh, yesterday we wanted to come, but today we have some other work. We have to go there. Uh, what's your take on this compared to Bangalore events and ha events happening in Fran San Francisco? Sure. In San Francisco, the AI events are crazy. Every day there is an AI event. And I spent almost a month recently in the last two years in San Francisco. It has become my favorite city. It's called like Mecca of AI San Francisco and when you register for an event for example AI developers meetup 400 people will register 500 to 700 will show up and after 500 people there will be a boxer like okay. you're going to a club and they'll be like sorry no matter where far you where, how far you have come from whether you come from San Jose Cupertino Palo Alto you drove they'll be like it is full you guys are late goodbye and that's the high. We have to go before for some of the events because they are getting so full that fast. And if I compare with now Bangalore, uh, if you go to Luma app and uh, we saw Luma app meetup.com, mm -hmm. right. like 100 people will register, 50 will RSVP and only 10 will show up. Mm -hmm. So I think people are very moody here. They will be like, today I will go to AI event uh, and they will plan in the morning and in the evening be like, it's a lot of traffic. I have work and 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 also I think the work here is also a bit more till 8 p.m. as compared to 5 p.m. Many of my friends are working till 8 p.m. Work-life mm -hmm. balance in especially Indian startups is not as good as I think American startups, American American companies because I think people work really long hours. It's like considered normal. If they are collaborating with American companies, they work late. Do you agree? Right. Yeah, true, true. Uh, especially with the mindset we have, again, I'm not against working for 70 hours. Maybe you can bash me for that. Uh, but don't give your life to the company. I mean, of course, if you're working for, let's say, 40 hours a week, that that works. But apart from the working hours, if you can spend on yourself, maybe do, doing, uh, doing freelancing work or upskilling, upskilling yourself, that works. And these events are very important. Networking, uh, going to events, even if... Sometimes I go to event, not because I have the hope that I will meet new people, 
I just want to go there just to experience it. Sometimes it is helpful, sometimes it's not, but you have to be there. Um, and yeah, that's the culture we have here. But again, things are changing, which I, which I can see. A lot of startups are applying what is happening in different countries. Uh, few countries are allowing four weeks a day, uh, four days a week, and that, that is working fine. Let's see, in India, we'll have that soon. Now, since we're talking about AI, uh, there's a lot of hype going on. So I remember in February 2023, one of my uh, student, also intern in the disco, he was talking about ChatGPT. He was like, you know, ChatGPT will take over everything. There was a hype time, I think January, uh, Feb it was. And he was like, no, in future, everything will be AI. And it's happening, you know. After, after that, if you look at different events happening uh, from different companies like Google, Microsoft, Meta, uh, even uh, now they are making Llama 3 as open source and uh, it's almost free. Um, and what else we had? Uh, Devin, Devin AI. Uh, I mean, they created the hype like anything and YouTubers like us, we, we were able to get some more views talking about it. So what do you think? Is it a hype or a boom or it's actually happening in USA? See, I think... Numbers do the talking for AI. So I will just give a to the point answer. So if you just look at the revenue of companies after the AI investment, and uh, people think that AI investment have started in 20, 2022, but no, it started way back. Meta, Google have been working on AI from the last decade or even more than that. Self-driving car in San Francisco is a project since 2011 which is now reality, which is running every day in Waymo. Every street, you see one self-driving car in San Francisco and you're like amazed. Now talking about the profits people are making, Meta is leading 22% of the revenue increase that happened in Q2 of 2024 is driven by AI. AI is boosting their recommendation system of Reels. People are more addicted on Reels, on Facebook, or even uh, on all these platforms powered by Meta. In fact, the glasses, they are planning to add the AI voice assistant in their Ray-Ban glasses, which will boost as well. Maybe it will be coming next few years. And uh, now Amazon is has the Alexa. It's in everyone's house, right? right? And that is 5 billion loss for Amazon. But now they are adding AI assistant of Amazon in it, which can potentially be profit. But that is a potential. But currently, Meta, Microsoft, Microsoft had a profit in Azure, which was almost 0.5% billion, which was because of AI. NVIDIA is, is basically all because of AI, their profit, and Google. So these four companies have felt a difference in the last two years with AI, and Meta is leading the profits. Awesome. In fact, when you're talking about uh, the culture there, I got one more question. Uh, I'm a big fan of Silicon Valley series, TV series. I'm, I'm not sure if you have I've seen, seen it. it. I love it. Uh, Richard, uh, what's the full name of it? I forgot. Richard. Richard. Uh, so, do you see the similarity of that, uh, the way they have portrayed startups there compared to what's happening in the, happening there now? So, when you go to any AI event, tech event, founders are approachable. You shake hands and you feel that people are introvert there. Mm -hmm. uh, communication is not very smooth, people are not very extrovert, some, some tech people, there are a lot of memes, and that's the reason San Francisco and San Jose sometimes is called Man Francisco, Man yeah. Jose, yeah. because uh, people are, tech, tech dudes are introverts, sometimes they're not as good with dating, and also in San Francisco, it's fine, but in San Jose, you barely see girls, it's like one out of five percent is a girl, so, or, or a woman, so it's, the, the gender ratio is imbalanced. So that's my YouTube stats. <laughs> <laughs> so majority of the viewers are male, then female. So I'm not sure why it's happening. Maybe I have to look good. Or maybe people, girls are not learning from YouTube or maybe not, not learning from my channel. I'm not sure. How, no, how is no, your stats? Same for me, everyone. I think my, my channel, my stats are like for tech videos, 80% men, 20% female. So what do you think? How do we increase that? Because I've seen different events. In fact, I went to one of the Google event and parallelly they were running the uh, event for women. How do we encourage women to get into tech? But I see that in colleges they have. If, in fact, when I was in my college, I, we had 45% female and 55% male. Still a good, good ratio. But when it comes to industry and the way they learn, maybe they take a career gap 
because of family issues and other issues, I'm not sure. But we should make it more open for women to take, come into tech. We should motivate them, especially after the gap, you know, when, when they get married, when they have kids, they take a gap there. And because the tech is moving so fast, they find it difficult to come back. In fact, we run online batches, right? We teach Java uh, and we see uh, people who, I mean, we see different uh, students, they have the same issue. They, they, they were doing good with tech, they got married, they have kids now, they took a break for three to four years uh, to take care of the family, and when they come back, it's very difficult for them because initially they were using some different technologies. Let's say for front-end, they were using Angular or maybe normal HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and now React. So they find this gap. So I think companies should create those policies. How do we encourage them to hire more? Maybe that will increase this stats more. True, I mean, in industry, it's it's really stuck. I mean, if you look at IITs too, like the gender ratio is one is to 10 too, yeah. you know, but uh, even even in Germany, I went to AWS event in Germany, I think 20% were women and 80% men, so. Maybe if you can have more female in the tech industry, the outages will be less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, uh, in fact, the last year, last year, last year, I made a video I read this article somewhere, uh, it was a research paper, how different programming language impacts climate change. Example, uh, if, you, if you have a task to complete and if you are doing it in C, now C takes less memory, C takes less computing power, so you can achieve the same task with less amount of energy. If you do the same thing with JavaScript or let's say Python, it consumes more energy. So if you think in a broader spectrum, let's say all, all over the world, if you have an application which is used by everyone, let's say Instagram now, so if you write Instagram in C, it will impact the climate less compared to write written in Python or written in JavaScript. In fact, when I made the video, I got the comments as well. It depends upon developers as well, how you write a code. But even if you have two developers proficient, I feel the C developers can make the application less energy impact impactful. Now coming back to AI, now since everyone wants to do AI, in fact, when you want to search something, you searched on AI, I mean, think about this. Every time you want to get something, you use AI. Maybe when we are making this video, Instagram listening to us, right? Continuously, there is a lot of uh, data gathering is going on, a lot of uh, processing is going on. Do you think it will impact the climate? I think 100%, and we can see the climate change. For example, AWS is the biggest cloud provider in the world. Now, AI is trained on NVIDIA's GPUs, which are like H100s, H200s, and coming with Blackwell series B100, B200 now. Now, they take a lot of energy. The biggest challenge in AI is energy. And you can see Amazon pulling energy directly from a nuclear plant now because they're struggling with energy. If Amazon, it's AWS, cloud platform is struggling with energy, the next would be Microsoft, then would, next would be Google. All of these cloud platforms are going to struggle with energy. And I think more AI we use, more energy we are using as compared to any software applications as you mentioned. So AI's biggest challenge is energy, but later when AI is built perfectly, even with inferencing, energy will be higher. Because for example, if you even if you use ChatGPT right now, mm -hmm. even for infer inferencing that data, energy is being used, it's, it's much more than just programs. Right. So next time when you are thinking about you forgot to switch off your AC because it will impact the climate, Think about using AI next time. So, of course, you should use all those tools. They are there to, for the for you to use. But don't, just because you have a thought in your mind and you are searching on AI, think about climate change there as well. Maybe we should talk about climate change more on the channel. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, okay, now just to uh, wrap up, very important question about the job market. Because in India, it's still not that bad compared to what I'm hearing in US. Because every time someone, when I talk to my friends who are in US, they're like, Job market is very bad here. Things are not going good. Like look, things are looking stable in India. Uh, so what's happening there? What's what's with uh, the layoffs everywhere? Sure, people are struggling with jobs. And I, I let me tell you my last few months of experience, especially for Indian students who went there. So I interviewed students in New York, in Georgia, in Chicago, in San Francisco. Most amount of students with jobs are in San Francisco with job rate of 50%. If let's say 100 students are graduating, 50 are having full-time jobs right now. And least is in New York City, Atlanta, 10, 
and maybe in good schools like New York, NYU, it's like maybe 20, 25, 30 percent. But it, people are everywhere struggling for, for sure. And I think people who are not struggling, who are getting up to date with networking plus learning what is hot right now, that is AI. So in San Francisco, uh, we talked about events. Every day there is AI event and after after every event, founders come up, come up with that white word, we are hiring for AI engineers in X, Y, Z. Let's say computer vision, maybe in generative AI, maybe maybe one stack developer or full stack developer, front end, back end. So they come up with that whiteboard and they negotiate immediately because oh. with networking, you know that other person is really desperate to and founder is desperate to. They want to hire fast. In Valley, there's a principle, hire fast, fire fast, right? right? Even Ashneer Grover here, many <coughs> startups in India also talk about that. So people are really fired really fast. And in that meetups, when you hire really fast on the same day, some people start. And then, uh, and, and you know, these people who get hired really fast are really, really good with communication, good with networking, good with the skills and good with presenting. And they are getting hired and that's why the job rate is highest in Silicon Valley because people are getting up to date every day. Right. Yeah, and I, I think there is more value in networking and going to these events, conferences, which are free in San Francisco as compared to a master's degree, mm. which will which will take two years to upskill. But events, maybe like in a few days, you'll be upskilled. Mm. So that's the scenario. True. So don't just focus on technical skills, but also network with people, very important. US is a bit different in India. We do prefer skills, but again, things are a bit changing now. Try to attend different events and uh, see where you can get help. Yeah, adding on to the job market. So if we compare Bangalore versus uh, San Francisco, San Jose, like 80% of the job posting every day you see, people are getting poached in software industry in Bangalore. Like there's so much demand. Like Python team was let go in Google yeah. in US, but now they hired again around thousands of people in Bangalore. So people are getting poached really fast and 80% of the jobs here are still software. But over there, in especially in Silicon Valley tech industry, 40% are becoming AI. So that's why software is less focused. Awesome, awesome. So the thing is, takeaway points. Uh, focus on climate energy every time you build application. Uh, AI is booming everywhere, so make sure that you get into AI as soon as you can. And the most important point is networking. So don't just focus on your technical skills. I know technical skills are very important, but once you do that, focus on networking skills, improve your communication. And when you go for the interviews, they might not choose the best te technical person. They may choose someone who can also talk and explain what they're thinking and what they're doing. So thank you so much, Hanur, for coming on this channel. Uh, uh, I hope next time when you come to Bangalore, you will let us know. Absolutely. Be in the office. Pleasure meeting. Thank you so much Pleasure for having meeting. me. Thank you so much, everyone.